Welcome to groups. It's good to it's good to have you guys here uh, talking about the Word of God and being together in a community. Uh, as we look at the Gospel of Luke, it's unique how he has constructed the the two stories to, in today's story: the Good Samaritan and Mary and Martha. And really, he uses these to demonstrate the the law of God, which is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. So in these two stories, we see how Luke uses the two examples as they're different. There's a different way you went through, hopefully you were at church, but you'll go through the material day, but you see how like it's not so much a checklist of what you do to show you love God. It's well, when you're in a relationship with someone, there's nuance, there's real connection. It's it's the the emotional uh, equation changes how we engage. And being in a relationship with God and loving Him means we end up loving those He loves. And everyone who wears skin on this earth was created. Every human being is created in the image of God. They bear something of the unique, majestic beauty of the image of God in them, and God loves them. Jesus died for them. So when we talk about who's our neighbor, everybody's our neighbor. There is no one who is beyond the scope of our neighbor. And how do we love God and love neighbor? Today, we talk about that and we realize that it starts with the love of God. We'll always find reasons to not like people. But if we are first in a close, loving relationship with God, it's not just a religious thing of check boxes, it's a relationship with God, and we begin to value what God values. So the challenge of this today is to get away from checkbox religion and love God, love him, be in relationship with him through his word, through his community, through fellowship and prayer of the Holy Spirit, and just in relationship with him. Love him, and you'll find that loving your neighbor comes just as naturally as breathing. Because in loving God, we find out and we adopt what he loves. So I invite you today as you go into groups to be mindful. We're not here to fulfill a checklist of do's and don'ts to prove we love God. We are here to actually be in a relationship that grows our love for him. All right, here we go with the kids' questions uh, for our group's content. First question, why did the rich young ruler want to know who his neighbor was? Question two, the Levite and the priest walk right past the injured man. Why? Question three, how was Mary loving the Lord with all her heart, soul, mind, and strength? Kids, we're so glad to have you part of the small groups. I'm so glad you're taking the time and engaging in the material and really wrestling with what it means to love God. Um, I feel like you guys often have an edge over us adults. You love with abandon and you forgive quickly. So thank you for helping to be a part of these discussions. I hope it was a great time for you. Now, whatever you do after this, I hope you just have fun with your friends and the families in the small groups. Have a great night or day if you meet in the day, but I assume it's at night. See ya. All right, adults, here we go with your questions for our group's content. Who do you identify with in the story of the Good Samaritan? Why did the rich run, blah, 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 blah. why did the rich young ruler ask who his neighbor was? Go through the Samaritan man's actions step by step. How many ways did he show love? I think this is in verses 33 to 35.
Look at the story of Mary and Martha. Who do you identify with more, Mary or Martha? Question five. Do you agree that our love for God is shown in how we do or do not choose to spend time with him? Question six. Mother Teresa once said this, intense love does not measure, it just gives. Do you agree? Hi, do we have a budget? Yeah. Our group's questions today, we have a a few questions we're tackling kind of from the budget standpoint. So the first one is this, do we have a budget? Yes, we have a budget, but because we're young and uh, change is happening pretty quickly here, we do six month rotating budgets. So every six months we put out a new budget. Lindsay Bazan is our business director and she formulates the budget based on our values and the directions we are heading as a ministry. And she takes input from other ministry departments and leads here at the church. We plan in Pencil, which means there are times where we make changes to the budget currently because, well, when you plan in pencil, you can erase some things where you realize you don't need to spend that. You can either reallocate it or just not use that money. Um, 10% of everything we take in, all money taken in for any reason, 10% is a tithe, and we give it back to our mission and benevolent fund. This includes what some might call benevolent giving for people in need. It includes a mission fund that goes to our uh, regularly supported missionaries, students and people going on mission trips or going to YWAM ships, a DTS, something like that. It includes local ministries like... Um, Atlas, things like that, we we support those, and other gospel outreaches, both near and far. That's what that 10% goes to. That budget that Lindsay develops is then approved by the finance team. The finance team takes a look at it, they kind of fine-tooth comb it, and they give it to the board of the church, the church's governing board. And the board votes and approves or makes changes to and sends it back um, to them for revisions. But the board is the final approval of our budget. So why don't we vote on the budget? That's one of the questions that was asked. Why doesn't the church vote on it? One of, the, one of the realities that we hold on to here is we know why we're doing what we do. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't have checks and balances that really provide a great deal of integrity and accountability for our financial processes. But if I went into Herman Miller and said, you guys, you spend you know $400,000 a month on paper, I, I think we should vote on that and give that money to the people. You'd be like, whoa, Eric, you don't really know what we do at Herman Miller. You know, you don't know the why of that spend, right? I could be mad about how much stain they buy or something like that and be like, why are we spending so much and not know the why? Why are you doing it? For every dollar we spend at the Foundry Church, we can tell you why. We can tell you why we spend it, and we don't put it up for a vote simply because we're not asking what we should do. We're asking you to join us in what God's doing and trust that we are people who are in it. We know why we're spending what we're spending because we're in it, but don't forget we have people who are governing it, who are deeply invested and in the organization, but they their board members who have jobs outside of here. And so they'll see, if they see an integrity gap, they'll name it. They're brave, courageous leaders who name things like that. Or they ask difficult questions. And there's been difficult questions asked to us where we had to go back and say, why are we doing this? And we get back to the why and we can come back and answer those questions pretty easily because we know why we're doing it. We know why we're spending what we spend and we're very clear on our goals based on our values and our mission to know God and make him known. We're in the organization And we believe that um, the way we're handling our budget has integrity and hope that you can trust the system we're in. If you ever have any questions on the budget, I just want you to know our door is open. But the right door to go to is Lindsay. She's the one who handles this. It's Lindsay 
dot bazan at foundrychurch.net. Email her. Ask her any questions. She will get you the information you're wondering about. We are happy to provide that for you. Don't ask me because I'm not in those conversations until it gets to the board. But I will tell you this, Lindsay has it readily accessible and would be thrilled to provide you the information you ask for. So if you're interested, you now know where to turn and get the information you want. Hope you have a great week, friends. And uh, we're excited for what we're doing at the Foundry Church and all that God's kind of pushing out of this place into our community. Continue being light and salt in the world. Be the gospel living and, and alive out in that community and let people see that Jesus loves them by the way you love your neighbor. Have a great week.